This is Teresa Barrington at the First Christian Church in Windsor. And today is our Palm Sunday online service that we're going to present. And I'd like, if you would, we're going to be talking about, the, of course, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And uh, that's found in the Gospels, but I'd like for us to read from the book of Matthew. So if you turn there with me to the 21st uh, chapter of Matthew, that's the first book in the, the New Testament. And let's read together, shall we? Starting with verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their co cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stir stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So this ends the reading of the word. We're going to be going several places in the Bible today. But, uh, uh, you know, usually on Palm Sunday, pastors will present something about, you know, the, the palms and uh, the branches and things like that. But today I'd like to do something just a little bit different. Of course, you know, this was uh, this day actually did happen and it was uh, followed by a, a week where Jesus taught and healed. He did all kinds of things in preparation for what he would ultimately do at the end of the week, which is uh, on Thursday night, he would have the Last Supper with his friends, his disciples. And then on Friday, he would be, um, that night actually, on Thursday night, he would be arrested. And then on Friday, of course, uh, beaten and... and um, scourged and crucified on on Friday <laughs> and then we would be heading into Easter Sunday three days later when he rose again but today we're talking about the Palm Sunday the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem so you know we had uh, there were palm branches I have some palm branches here And this is what most people talk about when they're talking about palm branches, right? They, the, the scriptures say that they cut this off of the trees and they were waving them and they were putting them down on the ground in front of uh, Jesus as he went by. But I want you to notice that there was not just these palms, but there were other palms there. There were the palms of the people's hands. So if you think about it, you have a palm, you actually have two palms, right? Um, they're unique to you. Uh, nobody else has a palm that looks like yours. And uh, you can do a lot of things with a palm, right? You can do a lot of things. Um, you can uh, cup it and you can drink water and you can uh, hold things in your palm. You can hide things in your palm. Mm -hmm. uh, you can... Uh, palm a basketball right wave with your wave with your palm right but uh um the thing about the palms like i used to use my palm for something unique when i was in high school uh i would write on my palm anything that was really important that i didn't want to forget did you ever do that did you ever yeah i did it uh in high school well guess what god has done the same thing god has written something on his palm do you know what it is? Well, let's turn 
to Isaiah 49. Isaiah is in the, the middle of the Bible, right by Psalms. And uh, this is one of my favorite chapters because uh, I just love this verse because it tells us something about God. If you start from uh, verse 13 of 49, it says, Shout for joy, O heavens, rejoice, O earth, burst into song, O mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. I don't know if you're feeling like that right now, but God does want to comfort you. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. So God replies to that, just like he might be replying to you today. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she bore? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. So can you imagine that? That God has his people engraved on the palm of his hand so that he won't forget them. But how can that be? God is a spirit. Spirit doesn't have hands, right? So often, especially in the Old Testament, God will use human terms to describe himself to people so that they can more connect with him and more understand him. And I think that's what's going on here too. But you know, um, as I was thinking about Palm Sunday this week, uh, I thought about how when God became flesh, he actually did have us engraved on his hands and it happened with the nails pounded by Roman soldiers. They engraved us in his hands and we know that even in his resurrection his new body he still had the holes in his palms because his disciples recorded that even doubting thomas said i'm not going to believe unless i poke my finger into the holes and when when he saw jesus jesus put out his hand and said poke your finger and he's like my lord and my god he understood that this mark on jesus it would remind jesus forever of us but it would also remind us forever into eternity of what he did for us, his sacrifice, that he died so that we could live. That was amazed me. I was just, I don't know. The Bible is so awesome how you can just delve into it and new things will pop up for you. So uh, let's go back. Let's go back to Matthew. Uh, and uh, talk from there. So if we look at verse 8, it says that a very large crowd gathered. Now this was a time, this was the time of Passover. Passover was the time uh, where they were remembering, the Jewish people are remembering when they were in Egypt and they put the blood on the lentils uh, so that the death angel would pass over them. And uh, anyone who didn't have that blood, the firstborn uh, died. And so um, they are told by God to remember this. And so uh, every year since then, they would gather in Jerusalem for uh, this Passover time. And so Jesus was coming into the city for Passover. There's lots of people there. And what are they doing? They're spreading their clothes down before him as he is coming in. And that's something that they did for kings. And so what they were hoping was that Jesus would be the king for them and would throw, overthrow the, the Roman army and uh, set them free because they were under great oppression from the Romans. And, and the truth is Jesus deserved that because he really was a king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, but he didn't come to overthrow uh, the kingdoms of men. He came to overthrow the kingdom of God's enemy and to take away uh, death. He took away the keys of death. So it's just a matter of scale. People didn't understand it. They didn't get it, what was going on. And so, so they take these cloaks and they're laying them down and then uh, like that's not enough. And so they go to the, the palm trees. John expresses in his version of this that they were palm trees. So they cut branches from the palm trees and they were laying those down too. And then some of them were waving them before them and they were shouting and it was noisy. There were so many people and Jesus is coming through. In fact, it was so noisy. The Pharisees told him, tell him to be quiet. 
And you know what Jesus said in Luke 19, 40? He said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And I thought about that. So I hope in my lifetime that I never hear a stone cry out, that I'm praising God and the people around me are praising God so that the stones can be silent. Um, we are the ones called to praise him. So um, just to give it like kind of a background, why were they so excited? I'll tell you, because this was a time of great trouble in the life and the nation of Israel. Um, in the Jewish nation. They had uh, been divided. They'd had civil war. They were killing each other left and right. Um, they had been conquered several times. Uh, and then the Roman Empire rose to power and they took over the Jewish territory and they ruled with an iron fist. Um, you just did not go against their rule or you lost your life. And as a people, they were still very agriculturally based. So they grew olives and fruits and wheat and barley and those kinds of things, but they also were heavily taxed. And I mean, it's just amazing to research the they were taxed by uh, first their own people, like the religious leaders, they took not just a 10th of everything, they took the, the first fruits, they took the, uh, even if you made a, a loaf of bread, you had to give it to them because it was your first loaf of bread. I mean, they took a lot. And then uh, they also took extra uh, uh, offerings uh, depending like one year for rebuilding the temple or, or giving to the poor. But on top of that, the Romans had their thing. They had a salt tax and a meat tax and all kinds of taxes. Then there were um, some Greeks that got a third of things. I mean, it was incredible how taxed. They were more heavily taxed than anybody in pretty much all of history. And uh, oh, that, I couldn't forget King Herod. He took some for himself too. So basically, this economy, it just couldn't be sustained. Like uh, Mike and I were talking, like if you've got a tree with 100 peaches, maybe you got five of them for yourself after all of that and, and to uh, try to sustain your family on that. And so there was a great disparity between the poor and the rich, and there was almost no uh, middle class. And so here we come to this time of Passover, and uh, Jesus comes on the scene. Right? Jesus has been around for three years. He's really famous uh, in, in, the, in the nation. And, and uh, they didn't have YouTube. They didn't have television. Uh, there was no way for that people really to see him in person until this day. He came to Jerusalem, and he came openly and boldly. And so people were seeing him. It was like the red carpet, right, of Judaism at that, at that point. And, and so people were really, really excited to see him, um, and, and I think part of it was because they were so oppressed and they were so um, put down um, that they were so excited. And so what, what they do, they were, they were treating him like a king and they, they put the palm branches in their palms. Now they could have just waved themselves, right? You know, praise, you know, Hosanna. But when you take a palm branch, and you put it in your hand and you wave it, look how much, I mean, probably off the camera, right? How tall it is. And so it's like an extension of my, even this branch kind of looks like an arm and the, the leaves look like fingers, right? So I'm extending my reach and giving Jesus even more praise with my palm branch than I could with my own hand. I mean, I mean it must've been incredible. It must have been an incredible scene. Uh, that many people and that much noise and all the movement and, and Jesus and the disciples around him. And wow, that, it, it would have been nice to be there, right? Well, guess what? There's going to be another time almost exactly like that. And uh, if you'll turn to Revelation 7, I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, Revelation uh, chapter 7, and it's in verse 9. And so this is where John is talking about uh, uh, something that he sees. He says, after this, I looked and there was before me a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb, get this, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. 
And they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So it's going to happen again. I mean, it's real. Jesus is coming. He's going to come back for those who believe in him. And uh, we are going to see him before God's throne. And we are going to all have white robes and palm branches. I mean, can you believe that? It's so exciting. I can hardly wait. It makes me want to say hallelujah. So um, we can look forward to that. But how does all this apply to what we're going through today? Well, I'll tell you. No matter what dark times we might go through, um, no matter you know, how hard the economy is hit or uh, how lonely people might be feeling or isolated or if you even feel poor or oppressed, you're scared, you're worried, I want to encourage you that God, Jesus, has you engraved on the palm of his hand. He has not forgotten you. You're not forsaken. He said, I will not forsake you or leave you. He just isn't going to. And so um, be comforted by that today. No matter what you're feeling, sometimes we can't go on feelings, hardly ever actually. We have to go on what we know. And, and uh, this is a true thing, that God has not forgotten you. In fact, if you seek him, he says you'll find him. God is not hiding. He's not playing hide and seek. He wants you to find him. In fact, he's placing himself in front of you. If you just can open your eyes and see, open your spiritual eyes and see that God is right here, right now. And he loves you and he wants you and he wants to comfort you and help you in your time of need. In fact, some of the ways that he puts himself in front of you is to put someone who believes in him in front of you. And so um, I want to talk to some of you that already believe in, in God and in Jesus, and you know that these things are true. Um, you are made in the image of God, and if God has engraved someone, <laughs> all of us, on his hands, then God has also engraved someone on your hand. Who is it? Look at your hand. Who's there? Is it your family, the family you were born into? Is it friends, the, the people that stick closer to a brother than a brother in your life? Is it your neighbor, your neighbors? Perhaps even it's someone you haven't even met yet, someone you don't know. Um, maybe it's your employer, maybe it's uh, employees. Could be a lot of different people, but I, I just want to say to you, don't forget them don't be, be like God you put them there so that you, he's put them there so that you can be reminded of them so you're in a challenging time and what the thing that you don't want to do is pull back into yourself and, and push people away or you know push your relationships because you're scared and you're trying to uh, take care of your own self um, I'll, t I'll tell you um, God's put these people into your life for a reason, and he's given you, probably already, all the resources you need to connect with them. So um, I just want to challenge you not to be a hoarder of, of uh, material things or even spiritual things that God has invested in you. If, if you're just looking out for number one, that's pretty, um, it's pretty selfish, but it's really motivated by fear, and fear is not of God. He's not given us a spirit of fear, right? but of, of power and love and a sound mind. So um, if you do that though, I mean, it's, it's not like it's a terrible sin. Um, it's not right, <laughs> uh, but um, I will tell you that if you do that, then you get your reward here where instead of in heaven, because I mean, Jesus talked about this with the Pharisees a lot of times where, you know, they, they got their reward here. And so their reward in heaven is less like remember the young ruler um, he did everything right but he wasn't able to give away all his stuff and give to the poor to follow Jesus and and I'm not saying give away all your stuff and give to the poor but you be faithful to whatever it is that God has called you to do that's all I'm saying trust in God don't be afraid um, it, what, what you God has given you 
uh, you can pass on to others and he will keep supplying your needs. He'll, he'll give you your daily bread. He's going to give you more actually than you need. God is doing a good thing. Remember in eight, Romans 8, 28, he's, God is working all things together for good for those that love him who are called according to his purpose. And so be in line with the good things that God is doing. With God's help, hear this, with God's help, we can extend our reach. Just like a palm branch extends the hand and the palm, we can reach people with God's help. They're the ones that are written on your palm. Be sure that you remember them. And what's the result? Jesus gets more praise, extraordinary praise, uh, because he deserves it. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So um, I just hope that you're encouraged today by my message, um, that you're not alone. God is real. He remembers you, uh, but he's also calling you to reach out and make a difference in your world. So will you pray with me now? Um, dear Heavenly Father, if I could reach my hands up to you, I would uh, I'd reach them all the way up to heaven uh, before your throne, Lord God. Um, I want to stand before you with the palm branch, and, and I want to watch Jesus. I want to see the Lamb of God stand before your throne. I ask, Lord God, that in these challenging times that you just empower your people to extend themselves, to reach the ones that are hurting or lost or broken or sick or sad. Lord God, forsake their, any kind of selfishness. we got to forget about ourselves and trust in you. You're going to take care of us. We are your children. Take away everyone's doubt and fears, um, our reservations, and, and let us be anticipating those divine appointments that are going to come. Lord, Pour your creativity into us so we can just meet them wherever they might be, Lord God. And no, we can't touch each other with our hands, but we can reach out. We can call. We can write letters. We can uh, be on social media. We have a lot of things at our disposal, God, but just prompt us to reach out and support and encourage each other. Lord God, all of this is going to become a memory someday, but I pray that we're learning from it and something good, of course, I believe it, is coming from all of this. Yes, we'll be different, but let's allow that we can be better than we were before. Give us your wisdom. Give us your strength, Father. Thank you for your word. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for going the extra mile for us, for facing the hardest thing so that we could live with you in eternity. Father, help anyone who's doubting right now, anyone who doesn't know you but is seeking you, Lord God, just give them that assurance that all they need to do is believe in Jesus Christ and they will be saved from everything that is to come and even into eternity. Jesus, you love us so much. Help us to feel your love today. And thank you. Thank you for everything that you did and that you are doing now in our midst. I praise you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Thank you.